Hi there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the simple wooden doll that we made in the video, making a simple wooden doll with a child, and add hair and shoes to it. Again, the focus will be on empowering the child to do as much as they can to help them without doing the job for them any more than is necessary. These are the materials that you'll need to add the hair and the shoes to the wooden doll. You're gonna want some wood for the shoes. In this case, I'm using three quarter by three quarter pine, although you could use any material. You'll need a Venetian blind card, yarn, scissors, glue, and the rest of the tools listed. I'll be using a miter box and a back saw to do the cutting, and I'll be using a hand drill. You could use a number of different saws, or you could use an electric drill, but please be careful if you're doing that with a child. Let's start with the hair. You could start with the shoes if you wanted, but in this case, I think the hair will be our best move. We are going to be looking at the top of the doll's head, okay? This is a great opportunity, if you're working with a child, to talk about grain. And I'm gonna show you a piece of the end grain of a larger piece of wood. You can see these dark lines and the lighter bands between them. Those are the growth rings on the tree. And when I'm working with children, we'll count how old this particular piece of wood is. If I'm drilling holes, I want to drill those holes into the softer wood. On a piece of wood like this, where the bands are, are broader, I'll make my dots where the wood is soft. On our particular doll, the bands are so closely bound together that it doesn't make any difference where I make my dots. So I'm going to make some dots on the top of the head of the doll. Um, in this case, I'm using yarn um, when I do put in the hair so I can make, oh, about nine dots on a doll this size. I'm going to, going to be drilling some pretty small holes. Once you've made the dots, you know where to drill your holes. You need to hold the doll in place so that you and the child you're working with or the child all on their own can drill those holes. Holding this in place is more difficult than holding it in place to drill the holes for the arms and legs. If you have a bench vise like this one or access to one, that is by far the easiest way to hold it in place for the most successful experience for everyone involved. Not many people have a bench vise though. Let me show you a couple of other methods for holding it in place that are equally effective. One method of holding the doll in place for this part of the job is to use a box like this plastic crate, a wooden box, a wooden crate, some box that is very stiff. I'm going to clamp the doll up. I'm using a C-clamp. It's necessary to have a C-clamp for this method, something that can really hold that doll firmly. Once I've got it clamped so the head is pointing up towards the top of the box, I'll turn the box, and now I can drill very easily in that orientation. If you have the ability to make something like this, I think you'll find it very, very useful, not just for making the doll, but for making any other project or any time that you need to clamp something onto a vertical surface. This is just two pieces of two by four. They're about eight inches long that are screwed and glued together so they're nice and solid as one entire unit. I can take this piece and I can clamp it onto a bench, onto a horizontal surface, and get a vertical surface that is secure to clamp on. It's great for working with kids because I can put it onto the right height and I can use it with any surface. You will need another C-clamp. So I'm gonna clamp this onto here and this points out another little neat piece you can do with kids. If the C-clamp needs to be adjusted, don't do it for the child. Have the child do it for themselves. And in the process, don't tell them which way to turn it. Figuring out which way to turn this handle to make the C-clamp close or open is quite a job when you're doing it for the first time and it's a great process of discovery. So I do that with my own students, and I've been doing it for 35 years, letting them figure out how to make the C-clamp open and close. So I'm gonna wrap this around here, make that nice and tight, 
Now I can attach the doll to this surface. I'm gonna use a clamping block. Oh, my C-clamp is almost the right size. It is, I'm in luck, it's the right size. There we go. Now I can clamp this up securely this way. I'm all set. This is a nice solidly mounted secure platform for the child to do the work of drilling these holes. Our next step is to select the correct size drill bit for this job. In this case, first I will examine the material I'm using for the hair. I'm using this lightweight yarn and I'm going to be double stranding it. That means I'm going to be folding the yarn over and poking the loop into the hole. I need a hole big enough to take two strands of yarn. Let's check out these drill bits. Maybe this one would do. I'll do the two strands of yarn. I'll match it up next to the drill. And this is a great thing to do with the child you're working with. Have them help you decide the right size drill bit. Uh, that one, I bet we could get away with a slightly smaller one. Yeah. Let's put this back and pull out this one. If you're doing this with a child though, be sure you pull it out of the case. If you drag your fingers along this side of this drill bit, you can cut yourself on the blades. So, so it's like a paper cut, not a great idea. So uh, that, look, that looks pretty good. I wonder if we can get away with one that's even smaller. Let's try this smaller drill bit. I'm gonna match that up. Ah, uh, that looks a bit too small for our purposes. I do not want it to be frustrating for the child to put the yarn into the hole. I think that one's gonna be our drill bit. I don't wanna go in the full length or go all the way through the doll. So once I have selected the drill bit, I'm gonna put a flag on it. I use this blue painter's tape. Again, a great job for the child to do. I'll match up my drill bit on a ruler. And then let's see, let's make, let's go in about a quarter of an inch. We don't need to go in much farther than that. Maybe three eighths of an inch. You can help line up the tape and then the child can do the next part of folding it into a flag. There, now I've got a nice flag on that drill bit. I won't go in too far. I'll be going in just the right amount. I think I'm going in about three eighths of an inch. Something like that. Deep enough to have that hair get all the way in and stick. As you can see, I've put the drill bit into the chuck of the drill. I'm ready to drill my holes. And of course it's with my favorite hand drill. If you're using an electric drill, please review what I said in making a simple wooden doll with a child. If the child is small, if they're really young, brace the drill for them. If they're older, they can brace the drill themselves, but you're gonna want to keep track of it. It's best to have lots of hands on that drill, especially as older kids are learning to use it. It can get out of control. In this case, I love the hand drill. I'm gonna match it up on one of my dots. I'm holding on to the top. If I'm doing this with a child, they might be holding on to the top as well. And then they can turn the handle. And again, learning which way it goes. It's got to turn this way. I've had kids turn it this way a while before they figured it out that I need to go the other way. So I'll drill my hole down to the flag. Oh, all the sawdust came blow blowing right off the top. That means I'm in far enough. Here's a close-up view of drilling the holes. I match up the drill bit and with a little child, I'll match it up with them. I can hold on to the flagged part of the drill bit so that that ends up in the right place. There we go, now I'm ready to drill the hole. And when I get down to the flag, it's gonna knock the sawdust off. There we go, I know I'm through because the sawdust got knocked off. And you can see my drill bit has walked around a little bit. It doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna put it right there as long as I stay on top of the head. Once you finish drilling your holes, Unclamp the doll and tap all of the sawdust that is accumulated in those holes out. I just bang it onto a hard surface and then it's all cleared out. And you can see some of my holes crumbled into each other. That happens. I'll show you when I put in the hair that it doesn't make much difference. As long as I've got enough holes, 
and I've got the area covered well enough on the head. Now I clamp the doll back up again. I've got the sawdust out of the holes. I am ready to install the hair as soon as I have the hair cut to the right length. Oh, and matching this up is sometimes tricky. Oh, there we go. Now it's time to cut hair. As you can see, I am particularly fond of this blue yarn for hair for my dolls. So I'm gonna use it again on our new doll. And I'm going to cut the, the yarn twice as long as I want the hair to be. That's because I'm going to fold each piece in half and poke the fold into the hole. So I'm gonna make it generously long. I can give my person a haircut later on. And this is a great thing again for the kid you're working with to do on their own. Like, how long do you want the hair to be? You cut it. If they know how to use scissors, they can do it all on their own. Remember, all through this process, the point is to empower the child to do everything they can. I need nine pieces, so I'll go ahead and cut nine pieces of yarn. Here you can see I am all set up for installing the hair. I've got my hairs laid out, I've got a toothpick for poking them into the holes, and I've got my glue. In this case, it's carpenter's glue. Any white glue will do the job perfectly well. First, I'm going to fill these holes with glue. It's easiest to do them all at once. So I'll put my glue in here, like this. I'm not too worried about getting them right in the holes because I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna push them in. This is a really fun job for kids to do once they get used to the idea of their finger getting gluey. A paper towel's handy. I always cheat and just wipe my finger off on the bottom of my bench. I think I was the kid who put bubble gum on the bottom of the table in school. Now, I'll take a hair. I will fold it in half. I'll put the fold right over a hole and I'll push it in with the toothpick. Sometimes that toothpick likes to grab it a bit. Once it gets started though, it tends to stay. Make sure that hair is securely stuffed into the hole. I'll do another couple so you can get the idea. I fold the yarn in half, place the fold over the hole, poke it in with a toothpick. I'm holding it in place with my thumb a bit to keep it from coming back out again. Give it a little bit of a twist sometimes in the toothpick. Helps you to release the hair that's stuffed in there pretty well. One more, just for good order for you. There we go, I'll put that fold, put it over the hole, push it into the hole, give a little bit of a twist to the toothpick, pull it up, poke it, there we go. Now you remember those holes that I drilled that kind of crumbled into each other? Since I've filled everything with glue, I just need to make sure that the hair is glued into something here. So I'm gonna poke into one space, and then I can do the next. As long as they get in there and there's some glue sticking them to the wood, we're good. I'll put in that next hair. And then I'll put in the last hair. See, even though the holes were a bit goofy, it still works. I'm gonna let this glue set for a good long time before I do anything else with the hair so I don't risk pulling it out. There is one more step with the hair, but I'll show it to you after we've made some shoes. These shoes I'm gonna make out of three quarter inch by three quarter inch wood the same pine that I used to make the doll itself out of. You could make shoes out of any other piece of wood you wanted. If you're making the doll out of found wood like sticks or a larger doll, it would all be proportional. Uh, a dowel makes great shoes, but it's much more difficult to drill the hole that you need for the string to go in because the dowel is hard to clamp up. If you've got a, a bench vise or something like that, that'll be really easy. But for our purposes, we're not gonna do a dowel today. I'll show you that in another video. And instead we're gonna use the three quarter inch dowel. I like to make my shoes about an inch long. 
They look a bit clunky, but hey, they're the shoes I like to make. And then I make a dot where I'm gonna drill a hole to put the string in, oh, about a third of the way in. So an inch long and then about a third of the way in here. That way there's enough wood around the hole that it won't break away. Now we're ready to drill these holes. Just as we did with the hair, we need to put a flag on the drill bit so we don't go in too far. I only wanna go in part way. So since the wood is three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch, I'll go in about a half an inch. So I'll measure, measure about a half an inch from the tip of the drill bit. And then I'm gonna put my flag right about there. Let me get it in the right spot. And again, as with the flag for the, for the hair, have the kid you're working with do as much as they can. Have them put the flag on, have them measure the half inch or show them where a half an inch is and go from there. Now I'm ready to drill the holes once I have clamped up the wood. As you can see, I've got our block of wood clamped securely to a solid surface. In this case, it's my workbench. I'm using the C-clamp and a block to pad with, and I'm ready to drill the holes. I'm gonna stop at the flag, and just like the hair, it will blow the sawdust off when it gets down to the right depth. Here we are. And here you have a closer look at exactly the same thing on the second hole. Now I need to cut these two shoes apart. I'm going to be using the miter box for this, in the last video about making the simple wooden doll, I showed you about using the coping saw. This is a great tool for cutting pieces of wood like this. I highly recommend if you don't have one, they're not very expensive, a great tool to use with children. So I'll set it up. Here we go. I'll take the saw out. I will match up the line that I want to cut with the line in the box with the slot. I'm using the spring clamp to hold it in place. Up, oh, I moved that line a little bit. I'll need to jockey it back in place. That happens. Now, the kid I'm working with can hide their hand over here and they can do the sawing just like this all on their own. Even if they're four years old, they can use this particular tool. So I'm gonna go like this and saw this foot, or this shoe rather. There we are, there's one. And then of course I can just unclamp, move it over and saw the next. It's really important, at least I think it is, especially when working with children, to show them to put the tool back properly. So I always have the back saw living inside the miter box. That way it's kept nice and sharp and safe. Let's keep that spring clamp there too for the next time. Now it's time to sand the shoes. I find it really helpful to children to have the sanding block held firmly in place and to rub the shoes against the sanding block. If you try and hold the shoe while you are sanding like this, it's really hard and you're likely to sand your fingers. So much easier to maintain safety and to be effective while doing it is to hold this in place. You can just hold it and down with your hand for the child or they can hold it themselves. Or you can use a C-clamp and clamp the sanding block to a surface. In this case, my trusty bench. And now it's super easy. I just rub it back and forth. I only need the one hand. There we go. And it's kind of like uh, <laughs> burning through a crayon. Um, I've had kids make all kinds of fun designs on their sanding blocks while they sand this. So here we go, I'm just sanding off all the sharp bits. Oh, you know, I could get that rough bit off too. Just rubbing that flat part right there and making it a bit smoother. There we go. Now I'll go for those corners, those edges. I find the term edge and corner somewhat difficult for kids to understand. This is a great chance to practice. Oh, these are edges, those are corners. I want to sand all the edges and I want to sand all the corners. So if you're uh, doing math with your kid, this is a great chance to practice some real practical geometry terms. Edges and corners. There we go. Oh, and surface. Faces. There we are. 
So faces, edges, corners. As you can see, this doll already has legs. It's the simple doll I made in the previous video. In order to put on the shoes, I either have to untie these knots and hope that the legs are long enough, or just simply put on new legs. Maybe you're making the doll for the first time, so we'll just take these legs off altogether. I can cut them off. There we go. Now we're ready to start over again. So I've got my quarter inch Venetian blind cord, the same rope that I used for the arms. I'm gonna push the cord through the hole. I gotta give it a bit of a twist. It can be a bit sticky. And then I'm not gonna tie a knot for the foot because I'm gonna put the shoe on there. I'm gonna leave this nice and long so I can decide how long to make those legs once I've got the shoe ready. So that's plenty long. Okay, I'll do that one. I'll pull it nice and tight. There's a hip done. I'm going to do the other hip by making a great big loop and pushing the entire doll through it. There we go. Now I can pull this. I want this knot to be pulled up against the doll. There, I got the other hip made. And now I'm gonna make these legs, both of them, about the same length. And then we'll decide how long we actually want them. Those are pretty long legs. I'm going to remember that the rope inserts about a half an inch into the shoe. So it's going to be about that long. That leg looks pretty big. And I do this with kids. How long do you want those legs to be? They might say, that's perfect, that's just what I want. Or no, I want this person to have really short legs. I'm gonna try and do it kind of proportionally and make it about the same length as the body. Okay, so that looks about right. I don't wanna cut it here. I wanna give it an extra half an inch or so. So I'm gonna cut right about there. And that should give me about the right length leg. And I'll do the same on the other one, about the same length. Now. Got my legs cut to the right length. I'm ready to put the shoes on, but oh, do you see all those chips and stuff? That is gonna be a real problem. So I'm gonna use a toothpick, same toothpick I used to put in the hair, just to clear out all those chips. I want there to be free and open holes. Now I'll put in some glue. I just do one at a time, because sometimes it takes a bit of finesse. I don't want the glue to start setting. So I can pinch this in. I'll bring it right up here so you can see it. I pinch the rope and push it into the hole. Give it a bit of a twist. I want it to go in just all the way. And now I have the job of kind of being like a, an orthopedic surgeon. Uh-oh, that shoe's exactly backwards. I want it to be out the front of my person. So I'm gonna keep twisting it until it, it lines up pretty well like that. Ah, there we are. Now we're ready to do the other shoe. Get a little bit of glue in the hole. And now, again, I'll, piss, I'll pinch the end and twist, pinch and twist. Okay, and let's get this guy lined up. Up, oh, our doll is doing gymnastics. Here we are. Up, oh, that one isn't facing the right way at all. Okay, and I want this to go like that. Up, oh, I got a bit of a twist. Get that foot facing the right direction. There, now our feet are facing the right direction. And we are ready to do the final step of the doll, which is to make the yarn look more like hair. As you can see, I've clamped up the doll again for this last process of unraveling the yarn so it looks more like hair. I've also waited a few hours for the glue to set Please wait for that glue to set before you do this part because you're going to tug gently on the yarn and it might pull out of the hole, which can be very frustrating. So let that glue set, then clamp it up. If you're working with a child, just hold it for them. Or they can hold it between their knees. That works just fine too. It doesn't need to be held awfully firmly. Just you don't want it wiggling around too much or it becomes frustrating. To unravel the yarn so it looks more like hair, there are some simple techniques. First of all, you're gonna want a toothpick, a sharp one if you can, if you have one, and then unwind the yarn 
so that the fibers are all parallel like this. Then you can poke the toothpick in here and use it to pull those fibers apart. And I can do this one here like this and this one here like that. There, now we have the fibers separated and we've got a lovely head of hair starting on this beautiful doll. Oh, that one wants to untwist a little bit more, so got to peel it apart. It's a great job for being patient and you can see why you need the glue to be set because I'm pulling gently on each piece of yarn and I don't want them to pull out of the hole. So just a quick review, I untwist the yarn. So I go opposite of the twist until the fibers are all parallel with spaces. I'll put in my toothpick. Oh, I'll do one at a time. That'll show you even better. There's one. There's the other. And there's another. I found this to be a really wonderful kind of meditative task to do with a child. I might help them untwist it and hold it with, it, with it, all the fibers straightened and they can pick it apart with a toothpick. And there we are, we're all done. The hair's all unbraided, we're ready for a haircut. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have fun making things. See you next time.